I finally got my hands on the Xiaomi 12T Pro. And while it's not exactly a direct successor to the Xiaomi 12 Pro, it does have a larger battery and a more efficient TSMC manufactured Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset, which is the same CPU that we find inside the Xiaomi 12S Ultra. All three of these devices will be going head to head against the ZT Axon 40 Ultra, Galaxy S22 Ultra, Pixel 7 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max in this 100 to 0% battery life drain test. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness level using a lux meter. They've all been updated to their latest available software updates and they are all connected to Wi-Fi, no SIMs in any of these devices. They all have 120 Hertz LTPO displays except for the Xiaomi 12T Pro and the ZT Axon 40 Ultra, which are both sitting at a fixed 120 Hertz refresh rate. The Xiaomi 12T Pro, ZT Axon 40 Ultra and iPhone 14 Pro Max only have one resolution setting, which sits somewhere between QHD and Full HD. Since it's not quite as high as QHD, I've set the rest of the devices to Full HD+. Will the TSMC manufactured A16 Bionic and Snap Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipsets outlast the Samsung manufactured Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and Tensor G2 chips in this extremely detailed battery life drain test. This is Technic and without further ado, let's find out. So they're all currently sitting on charge right now, all sitting at 100%. You can't really pay too much attention to their temperature at the start of the test because they're all plugged in charge. So those are charging temps, not battery drain temps, but for all time's sake, 20.7 degrees is the room temperature. I have had the AC on throughout the test at 16 degrees Celsius and prior to the test as well. So like I said, you can't really take into account the temperatures right now while they're all plugged in charge, but if you are interested in it, the Xiaomi is the hottest and the iPhone is the coolest. Unplugging them all off charge and tapping the timer icon on the right hand side, just to let you guys know at the top right hand corner, we do have the time interval and that is in relation to the percentage below the branding above each device and all the temperatures which will change to interval and peak later on is also in relation to that time interval. If any of you are a tad bit rusty on specs, we do have all the specs at the bottom of the screen over there in terms of battery capacity. And while we're on battery capacity after the first interval, that being 30 minutes, we have 100% on the 12T Pro, 99 on the 12 Pro, 98% on the 12S Ultra, really weird there. 92% on the ZTE, hugest knock falling behind there. 96% on the Samsung, 96 on the Pixel, and 99 on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, tying with the Xiaomi 12 Pro. As I was mentioning earlier, all the specs at the bottom of the phones are there for you to gawk your eyes at. And focusing on battery capacity here, the largest cell here is 5,000 milliamp hours, but so many of them share the same sized battery, that being the Xiaomi 12T Pro, as well as the ZT Axon 40 Ultra, Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, and Pixel 7 Pro. While the iPhone has the smallest at 4,323 milliamp hours. It is really, really efficient. And the smallest Android here is the Xiaomi 12 Pro with 4,600 milliamp hours. Slightly above that is the Xiaomi 12S Ultra with 4,860 milliamp hours in terms of battery capacity. After the one hour, 30 minute mark interval, we have 91% on the Xiaomi 12T Pro, 86% on the Xiaomi 12 Pro, which is 5% behind its successor, not quite successor, 85% on the 12S Ultra, which actually has a larger battery than the 12 Pro, 79% on the ZT, still trailing the pack here, 86% on the S22 Ultra, which is now ahead of the Pixel's 84% and 91% on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is matching the 12T Pro. Actually, I should say the 12T Pro is matching the iPhone. And over here, it's 1% below, but that is still really impressive since Apple are known to take a while to drop from 100%. They're also known to have the best battery life because of the efficient chipsets that they have. Talking about chipsets, all of them are sitting at four nanometer run process node technology, except for the Pixel. The Pixel is still sitting at five nanometer process node tech. So it shouldn't be as efficient than the rest since they're all on four nanometer nodes, but the Pixel, or Google that is, have actually spent a lot of time in terms of optimizations this year for their phone. So it should still be really efficient and I'm really excited to see what happens with these results here since it did really well in my recent benchmark test and speed test in terms of battery drain. Two hours and 30 minute mark interval, we have 82% on the 12T Pro, 73% on the 12 Pro, 74% on the 12S Ultra, 68% on the ZTE, 76 on the Samsung, still 2% above the Pixel with 74%, 84% on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, second to the iPhone is only the 12T Pro with 82% now, 78%. Now 2% ahead of the iPhone, things have switched around this time. So the Xiaomi 12T Pro, for the first time in history actually, Xiaomi is actually above Apple in terms of battery. Xiaomi do not have a good track record when it comes to battery drain, and it is wiping the floor with its two brothers, the Xiaomi 12 Pro and Xiaomi 12S Ultra with 67 and 68% respectively, and reaching that three hour and 30 minute mark interval, just to let you guys know, 
based on what we're doing here. I'll tell you in a sec, back to the percentages here. 74% on the 12T Pro, 63 on the 12 Pro, 65 on the 12S Ultra, 60% on the ZT, 68 on the Samsung, which is now 3% ahead of the Pixels, 65%, and 73% on the iPhone. Switched around again, 74% on the Xiaomi. Once again, beating the iPhone for the first time in history, at least on my channel. And talking about on my channel, what I was getting to a little bit earlier is the fact that you can compare this exact test to all tests on my channel, all drain tests, that is, since I always keep the exact same structure, I keep the apps running for the exact same amount of time. I use the same lux meter readings on all my tests, so brightness levels on all phones tested on my channel are exactly the same. I use all the same apps, everything is the same. You can test it within my channel, but you cannot test it and compare these results to another channel because they use different apps and different brightnesses. Talking about being able to compare, that's why we're sitting at selfie recording 1080p 30fps. Most of these devices can reach even 4K with the selfie cam. For some strange reason, the biggest camera king here, the Xiaomi 12S Ultra, is the only one capped at 1080p 30fps with the selfie, but we're trying to keep it all the same based on my previous tests. Same thing can be said with the next one that we're gonna be doing, that being main video recording. All of them can do 4K 60fps, some of them can even do 8K, but we're keeping it at 4K 30fps to match all my previous battery drain tests and right now the Xiaomi 12T Pro is still on top here I'm so impressed with this guy I know he has a much bigger battery than the iPhone 14 Pro Max but he is beating it by 2% and now he's beating it still by 2% after the five hour mark interval. 56% on the Xiaomi as opposed to 54% on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. The rest of the devices all below 50% now with the Xiaomi 12 Pro now matching that pretty much of the ZT Accent 40 Ultra, which is sitting at 34%, 43% on the 12S Ultra, 45 on the Samsung and 41 on the Pixel. That's the five hour mark interval. And just to let you guys know, we're currently running benchmarks. We do an hour of benchmarks to simulate high performance games. Within 3D Mark Wildlife, it actually mentions this is to simulate high performing games. So that's why we do it, not to drain down the phones a little bit quicker. And after that, the Xiaomi 12T Pro for the first time during this test got the hottest in terms of interval and peak. And the iPhone is the coolest with interval and peak sitting at underneath 50 degrees. The only device here sitting at under 50 degrees. Now, all Xiaomi devices, when we were doing N22, not all of them overheated, only the 12 Pro. The 12T Pro was fine even in 3D Mark Wildlife. But as soon as we got to GFX Bench, all of them started overheating. Only the Xiaomi's, the rest of the devices were okay. I think the ZT overheated a little bit. And talking about overheating, it's actually worth mentioning that the Samsung manufacturing process actually messed up a lot with their chipsets. But before I get onto that, the first chipset that's made by Samsung with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 Xiaomi that just died. One of the reasons why they just changed over to TSMC. So the Xiaomi 12 Pro died here at six hours and 14 minutes with a milliamp hour per minute drain of 12.299. And we have surpassed that six hour mark interval, which is still great battery life. Over five is good, over six is great, over seven is amazing, over eight is fantastic, and over nine hours is outright insane. It'll be really interesting to see if any of them can hit over nine hours. And now we've hit six hours, 30 minutes on the rest of the devices with the Xiaomi 12C Pro taking a huge knock after that last app, 23% as opposed to 28% on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, iPhone now 5% ahead of the Xiaomi, 12% on the 12S Ultra, six on the ZTE, 18 on the Samsung ZTE just capped off there, 0% after six hours and 55 minutes. It does have a bigger battery than the Xiaomi 12 Pro, but it actually did a great job. They share the same chipset, so I was expecting similar results over here. So the milliamp hour per minute drain per minute reading is very identical here. After seven hours, the rest of the phones made it to that point. 12S Ultra sitting at the lowest yet, that being at 8%, 13% on the Samsung, 11 on the Pixel, 24% on the iPhone, which is now 5%, still 5% ahead of the Xiaomi 12T Pro, but the Xiaomi 12T Pro is still holding in there thanks to that TSMC manufactured Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset, the same one that we saw in the 12S Ultra, but the Xiaomi 12S Ultra ended now after seven hours and 23 minutes, which is actually almost exactly the same as the last test. In the last test, it was set to QHD resolution. It was now set to full HD resolution and there was only a one minute difference. So that kind of just proves that QHD and full HD does not really affect battery life all that much. Moving on to seven hours and 30 minutes, we have 11% on the 12T Pro, 1% on the Samsung, which is now 0% after seven hours and 32 minutes. So it did beat the Xiaomi 12S Ultra, but it does have a larger battery and it also has a less efficient chipset, that being the Samsung manufactured 8 Gen 1 chip. Yes, I do have the Snapdragon version of the S22 Ultra. Not long after that, the Pixel 7 Pro with the same size battery as the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra at 5,000 milliamp hours. Caps out at seven hours and 39 minutes. It had the best milliamp hour per minute reading so far for the phones that have died. And reaching that eight hour mark interval, I'm just so impressed with the Xiaomi 12T Pro. 6% after eight hours. That is the first Xiaomi device I've ever seen reach eight hours. And it just, 
It just makes me so happy as a tech reviewer to see Xiaomi actually pulling something out the bag here and doing something incredible in terms of battery life. Now we are nearing that eight hour and 30 minute mark interval. If any of you remember from my last test, the iPhone 14 Pro Max only reached eight hours and 30 minutes on iOS 16.0.2. We're running iOS 16.1.1 now. There we go, Xiaomi 12T Pro ends eight hours and 28 minutes. Congratulations, Xiaomi. That is the best battery drain I've ever seen come out of one of your phones. 5,000 milliamps, still a lot bigger than the iPhone. The iPhone is still going and they're both made by TSMC in terms of their chipsets, well manufactured there. Pretty much, I guess you could kind of say in the same warehouse. And the iPhone is still going after eight hours and 40 minutes, eight hours and 50 minutes. It's sitting at 9% after the last interval, which was eight hours and 30 minutes. So it's definitely surpassed the previous test that we tested it on, which capped out at eight hours and 30 minutes. Can it make to the nine hour mark interval? And it does with 6% of battery left. That is absolutely incredible. I can't remember the last iPhone that passed nine hours. I think it was two generations ago, the 12 Pro Max, and this is doing a bang up job of it. So let's see if it can make it to that nine hour and 30 minute mark interval. I'm just so happy that all these phones have done so well in this test. I mean, even the Xiaomi 12 Pro did slightly better than the previous test. They're, they're all doing really well. And the iPhone just caps out there at nine hours and 30 minutes on the nose, an hour improvement over the last time I drained it with the exact same app, same brightness, same everything. iOS definitely makes a difference in terms of battery optimizations. Seventh place over here, we have the Xiaomi 12 Pro with six hours and 14 minutes. Now I know what you're thinking, it did the worst, but in my eyes, over six hours is still fantastic battery life considering a 4,600 milliamp hour battery. Sixth place here, almost reaching seven hours, six hours and 55 minutes on the ZTE Axon 40 Ultra, which is fantastic considering the chipset it is using. Speaking about a more efficient chipset, that being inside the Xiaomi 12S Ultra, got seven hours and 23 minutes and placed in fifth with a 4,860 milliamp hour battery, which is fantastic. Moving on to fourth place, we have the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra only, almost 10 minutes higher than the previous phone that being the 12S Ultra with seven hours and 32 minutes, which is pretty much the best battery life I've seen on this guy so far. And then we have the Google Pixel 7 Pro in third place with seven hours and 39 minutes, same size battery as the Samsung and it beat it. I was kind of hoping that that would happen and it did. Now coming to the last two, the top dogs here, second place, the Xiaomi 12T Pro way ahead of all the other devices except for the iPhone, eight hours and 28 minutes with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. I am super pleased with this guy over here. First place, still the crown king, an hour improvement over the last time I tested it out. iPhone 14 Pro Max, first place with nine hours and 30 minutes and the smallest battery of the lot. Now, before we get into my findings, I just wanted to let you guys know that my S22 Ultra is a Hong Kong variant and the Hong Kong, Chinese and Taiwanese variants have not been pushed One UI 5.0 as of yet. So stay tuned for a future battery drain test video where I'll definitely be testing out the new software. Moving on to temperature of this test right now. It's pretty odd. The end temps are very weird here. The Xiaomi 12 Pro had the hottest end temp where with 52.3 degrees in Celsius, as opposed to the 12T Pro, which had the coolest end temp at 35.2 degrees in Celsius. So TSMC is definitely making a huge difference here, especially when we talk about peak, since the iPhone's peak is the coolest with under 50 degrees, and the Xiaomi 12 Pro had the hottest peak with over 60 degrees. Now, if you take a look at the top of the screen, you'll notice that I've put the previous test results. With the 12 Pro, last time I had it got six hours and 12 minutes, so a slight improvement. The 12S Ultra got seven hours and 24 four minutes, so it's gone down a minute. The Samsung got seven hours and 27 minutes last time out, so it's improved by about five minutes. And the iPhone, last time I got eight hours and 30 minutes, but that was using iOS 16.0.2. It just shows you what a difference iOS does in terms of optimizations for battery life. We're running 16.1.1 and it improved since the last time I tested it out by a whole hour. And if we take a look at the predecessor results, also at the top of the screen, the Xiaomi Mi 11 with the same size battery got under six hours. So I guess you could kind of say pretty similar. The Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra got six hours and 32 minutes as opposed to the 12S Ultra's seven hours and 23 minutes. So huge improvement over there. In terms of the Samsung, it got seven hours and 41, the S21 Ultra that is, so it's kind of dipped a bit. And the Pixel 6 Pro got seven hours and 15 minutes. So once again, a little bit of an increase thanks to great optimizations. And the iPhone 13 Pro Max got nine hours and 30 minutes, one of the best tests that I did with it. And this time it got nine hours and 30 minutes as well. So exactly the same as its predecessor because Apple are just the Mr. Consistency company. Now, if you take a look at the bottom of the screen, the bottom of each device, you'll see that I have 5,000 milliamp hour batteries across the board. If they were to all have the same size, 5,000 milliamp hour batteries. Now that cancels out the Xiaomi 12T Pro as well as the Axon 40 Ultra, S22 Ultra and Pixel 7 Pro since they already have 5,000 milliamp hour batteries. But if the iPhone had a 5,000 milliamp hour cell, it would have 10 hours and 59 minutes based on their milliamp hour per minute 
readings of this exact test. So almost 11 hours. I really hope that Apple decides to put a larger battery cell in their next phone, that being the 15 Pro Max. I thought it would happen this year, but I guess I was a little bit wrong. Either way, it still did fantastic with nine hours and 30 minutes, and I'm super thrilled that the Xiaomi 12T Pro performed so well as well, coming in second place. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Smash that subscribe button. This is Technic, and I'll catch you in the next one.